Well, hey now, Fitz here from Fitz Electric Bar. Thanks for uh, joining. And uh, today I'm doing a, uh, I guess a video version of a mixed tape. I'll explain a little bit. I'm guessing a lot of you guys out there like me were really interested, like did a lot of mixed tapes, compilation tapes in your time. Maybe it transitioned over into CDs as well. Um, I used to love putting compilations or mixed tapes together for friends. Um, uh, family members, uh, often with themes, you know, the spring would come and it'd be like spring hormones or the fall would come and uh, it would be kind of like a little bit more somber music and a little more melancholic and maybe a little more reflective. And I love putting the mixtapes tapes together. I like the idea of choosing the music. Uh, I loved um, naming the tape. Um, sometimes putting a little, uh, you know, kind of hand-drawn, you know, sketch or something like that on it. Um, or a little, you know, kind of um, embellishments. And also the whole, you know, um, kind of like process of putting a tape together, as many of you would remember, you're putting it on the you know, record on a turntable, you're playing it. And I used to often do like a half turn back on the, on the uh, tape and then put the next song on and it would be kind of like fade out, fade in, almost a very cheap form of, uh, of a mixing board. <laughs> and loved it. Anyway, so... The other um, types of mixtapes that I made were often for girls. Um, so I would uh, do a mixtape if I was interested in somebody, if I was dating somebody. And again, I'm sure I'm not alone in this. I love to hear other people's stories. But um, and it got me thinking a little bit about the idea of um, putting a mixtape together for uh, girls and the different stages of a relationship. Now, normally, if I was doing a uh, a tape for a girl, I would be in a certain mindset and the whole tape would have that kind of feel. And some of it would would communicate for me because I was, you know, hard. it was hard to communicate how I felt about this girl. Um, and other times it would just be the, the mood uh, would also kind of communicate how I felt. Way too esoteric almost for any anybody that I was interested in dating. And I have to tell a quick, quick story to start off with. Um, there was one particular gal that I um, was very interested in. And early on in our relationship, I, I made a mixtape for her. At the very beginning, I wanted to use my editing prowess. And I basically started the tape off with something to the effect of, you know, inviting her out for dinner. But the way I did it was I took little segments of songs of what I thought were quite well-known songs and I sort of spliced it together, again, doing the whole turntable drop and the rewind the tape, a half a half revolution. And I was, uh, so the, the basic thing that I was putting on tape was, would you have dinner with me on Friday night? And um, the, uh, like, uh, or won't you have dinner with me on Friday night? So won't you, I took a little piece of Bob Dylan's uh, Queen Jane, won't you? <laughs> and other little snippets. Um, and one of them was the specials, the B-side of Ghost Town was uh, I go out on Friday night and I come home on Saturday morning. So won't you? And then other stuff. And then Friday night. Anyways, the long and the short of it is the uh, the woman who I gave the tape to um, didn't pick up on any of that and thought I it was just kind of a bungled recording, you know, lots of uh, uh, mistakes at the beginning before the music came on. So, uh, um, yeah, that's sort of, uh, uh, what is it, like a cautionary tale that you put all this effort into something and hope that somebody understands it from the perspective of your of how, what you're doing. It doesn't always work. Um, but I'm going to choose each phase of a relationship or potential phase of a relationship. And what I used to also say is um, there are many artists and songs that perfectly fit. And there's always a Dylan song for each phase as well. So this is going to be uh, one or two songs for each phase of a relationship, the arc of a relationship from beginning to end, one or two non-Dylan songs and one Dylan song for each phase. All right, first phase, uh, I guess you could call it being lonely and um, wanting somebody. This tape doesn't go out to anybody. This one just stays within the domain of your house because <laughs> it's just so damn sad. So, you know, Hank, lonely, Hank Williams, of course, I'm so lonely I could cry. Uh, a perfect song for this first phase. 
of loneliness, of wanting more. This one is, is it's cheating a little bit in a sense um, in my quest for getting a shot of love uh, to continue to be reassessed and recognized for what I think it is a great album. Uh, shot of love off of this. Now, uh, in reality, this was the third of his um, religious uh, or born again albums. So he says, um, I need, you know, I don't need a shot of heroin to cure this disease. I need a shot of love. Um, Probably not talking about secular love. He's talking about um, the love, uh, you know, religious and spiritual love. But anyway, shot of love when you need something, you're lonely, you don't have what you want, shot of love. All right, phase two. Uh, we're going to call phase two, I just saw or met a girl. And uh, you are excited and you think that there's maybe some possibilities the Trogs with a girl like you, uh, the aspiration of uh, maybe being able to go out with this girl uh, off of this compilation record um, with a girl like you. Just this, the production on this is great. Uh, love the Trogs. Everybody knows them for a wild thing, but there's so much more. Their early sort of 60s uh, pop, um, it, it, wonderful. And the production on this is really great with a girl with a, uh, with a girl like you. I just met and saw a girl, another one, uh, Billy Bragg, greetings to the new brunette. But greetings to the new brunette always reminds me of, of falling in love and, and a girl that you find very attractive. Billy Bragg off of talking to the tax man about poetry, talking with the tax man about poetry. Dylan now. So what Dylan song? Well, <clears throat> baby, let me follow you down. So I'll do anything in this gosh darn almighty world if you just let me follow you down, Bob Dylan off of his first record. And that wraps up, I just saw or met a girl. Okay, so now you've met the girl, um, you've started dating the girl and things are going really swimmingly. Uh, it's going really, really well. And now you're falling in lust. Um, you know, you're really enjoying the physical, um, the attraction is being realized into something physical. Tim Buckley, this is from Greetings from L.A. and very different song for Tim Buckley, but uh, Get On Top. Get On Top is this really great funky song and uh, whew, it's just steamy as all get out. Uh, of course, you've got to have Marvin Gaye. This is live and uh, get it on. I mean, sexual healing, get it on. I mean, even what's going on, that's not like a sexual song, but any anything that Marvin Gaye sings... Um, exudes um, sensuality, I guess. Marvin Gaye, live, let's get it on. What's the Dylan one? Well, <clears throat> you can probably guess that off of Blonde on Blonde, I want you, I want you so bad. So I think that, you know, Dylan, I don't think uh, expresses uh, outright lust too often, but I think this one is, uh, it's not just about uh, love. I think there's a little more to it on this. I want you, Bob Dylan when you fall in lust. Okay, you've fallen in lust. And then there's usually one of two ways the whole thing can go. Either you bring the feelings into it and it becomes a deeper, more emotional uh, kind of relationship and you start to fall in love, uh, or the whole thing just explodes like a bang. Not that kind of a bang, but the other kind of bang, not the good kind. Um, so falling in love, I'm gonna choose a Tom Waits song, I hope I don't fall in love with you. What's really special about this record or this particular song is uh, he's not, um, he hasn't even met this woman. He's in a bar and he sees her across the bar floor and he looks at her and over the course of the song, he's hoping to not be encumbered or to fall for her. Uh, I guess it's going to be just too much for him. He doesn't want to be vulnerable and to ha let her into his life. And at the end of the song, whatever he's kind of projected or imagined that this person might be in his life, uh, he's fallen in love with her. And that all happens in the course of a, of a three-minute song or so. Uh, Tom Waits, Closing Time, I Hope I Don't Fall in Love with You. Terrence Trent Darby, uh, the uh, introducing the hard line according to Terrence Trent Darby and uh, sign your name across my heart. I want you to be my lady. So um, definitely a poignant song of falling in love with somebody. And for Dylan on the mixtape, this is the remix of Time Out of Mind and uh, Till I Fell in Love with You. Um, yeah, nothing more needs to be said. 
Okay, so you've fallen in love now. Everything seems really, really good. And in fact, it's gonna get better because you're just deeply in love now. This next phase is, you know, you're in, you, you've let all your barriers down and you've, you've fallen head over heels and you feel like the other person has as well. And um, I would say that you look at the world differently, like everything seems fantastic. And it's not even just about the love, it's just that everything that you look at seems to be happy and wonderful, right? And so in some ways you're looking at the world through rose-colored glasses and everything seems wonderful and that's because you're in love. Van Morrison, Coney Island, um, what a beautiful piece of music. And, you know, it's just, he talks about a fantastic day on Coney Island, but he's with somebody that he loves very deeply and he's sharing it with her or somebody, the other person. And it's, um, you can tell he's describing a state of mind of being in love and being in a place that he finds beautiful. Um, Coney Island off of Avalon Sunset. And that's being deeply in love. Another similar one would be Lou Reed's Perfect Day off of Transformer. It could be for a friend. It doesn't have to be for a lover. But there's something about this where there's just tremendous happiness. And for me, it, it feels like somebody who is deeply, deeply in love and um, is enjoying every moment of the perfect day. So Lou Reed Transformer. For uh, Dylan, uh, I'm going to argue for Sarah <clears throat> off of Desire. Now, I think that this was written at a time when he, uh, when Dylan and Sarah were no longer together. Um, but the way that he describes her as the mother of his children and what she means to him, it's kind of like a forever love. It's a, a really deep and it's a great appreciation for who she is and what she's meant to him in his life. So although it may be a bit reflective and looking back, to me, the tone of the song Sarah is of somebody deeply in love and still in love, even if the relationship is over. So Sarah off of Desire. All right, now the next phase. <laughs> You don't always go through every one of these phases, but often you do go through many of the phases. So the next one is um, I'm missing you. Um, and it may have the the sort of the nuggets of or the <clears throat> the seed of the relationship's ultimate um, demise. Or it just may be that I, you know, that you miss somebody uh, terribly. But it's uh, there's a, a sense in some ways that maybe. Uh, you won't end up having this person in your life, and you're but you're physically also not together at that point in time. The Pretenders. I have the single somewhere, but uh, two thousand miles. It's kind of a, a Christmas song in a sense, but it's also uh, a song about missing somebody uh, a lot. Another one that I've always loved. Just got this on vinyl, and that's the Del Fuegos. Uh, I still want you, and. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a lament of maybe um, the relationship may not have uh, legs and uh, really missing this person. So the Del Fuegos. And for Dylan, I would respectfully submit off of Oh Mercy. Don't seem to have this. I think this was the first one of the first Dylan records I got on CD and I never got on uh, vinyl, at least not yet. Oh Mercy and Most of the Time. One of the things I love about the the way this song is is written and performed is he just talks about how um, everything is fine. I'm getting on with my life. I don't really miss you. And then there's a, a pause and then he goes most of the time. I love that. So Bob Dylan, Most of the Time off Oh Mercy. Uh, this is not the fun part of the relationship, and that is if you've been betrayed. That's where the murder ballads sometimes come in and uh, songs of deep, deep lament. Um, betrayal. So great song of betrayal would be Bill Withers' Use Me. This is off of a, a greatest hits of Bill Withers, which is great. We all know it. You just keep on using me until you use me up. Betrayal. Uh this particular artist, uh, he wears what it is on his sleeve, Jaw Wobble. It's kind of a wacky cover, but um, former bass player of uh, Public Image Limited, I think the first incarnation and uh, Betrayal. Um, 
the song is very good and uh it really does have the the con the, the it conveys the emotions of what it feels like to be betrayed by somebody so betrayal by ja wobble and for dylan it's got to be where are you tonight off of street legal um there's a long distance train rolling through the rain tears on the letter that i write uh it's not the the tone of this of this song where are you tonight is not one of melancholy or sadness or whatever it it feels like he's desperate and he feels betrayed and he wants to know where she is um where are you tonight bob dylan off of street legal another one along with shot of love that i want to see get its due i think this is such a great record all right with betrayal of course there's tremendous anger and then the next stage which might be similar to the uh what is it the seven stages of coming to terms with death would be um to be feeling deep sadness and loss and who could do it better than aretha franklin since you've been gone um there are many many aretha franklin many many soul songs which would cover off that feeling of baby baby i miss you since you've been gone but aretha does it as good as anybody. Another one uh, completely left field, but um, I still really enjoy Leonard Skinner. There's a lot of sort of 70s rock and roll stuff that I put at the back of the proverbial milk carton, but Leonard Skinner and this particular one live, one from the road, um, I think is very good. Tuesday's Gone and um, beautiful slide guitar. I think it's Gary Collins who does the slide guitar, which of the three guitars is the, uh, the lead. Um, but a great, again, a great lament, uh, Tuesday's Gone. And um, she ain't coming back. Let's put it that way. And for Bob, you just know that the the sadness is of a relationship that's gone sideways or is ending has got to come off of Blood on the Tracks. There's so much here that you could choose from. This is the SACD version of Blood on the Tracks. And I'm going to choose Buckets of Rain, Buckets of Tears. Yeah. I remember when one relationship came to an end, this became my great friend to the almost to the detriment of the album because it's just always reminds me of that kind of that level of pain that I don't really necessarily want to revisit. <laughs> now, the next one could be another stage in a chronological order of a relationship, or it could have uh, jumped from the last one or two, like Betrayal could have jumped the uh, I Miss You So Much and gone right into this one. And that is the F U. It's all over. I don't want to have anything to do with you. And baby, 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 you're out of time. Um, <clears throat> this is, uh, it may or may not be related to um, a love relationship. It may be, you know, a woman who is arrogant or a person who's arrogant. But um, I think that the baby must refer to um, a woman. At least I assume that. But baby, you're out of time. Aftermath, the Rolling Stones. And uh, the Hoodoo Guru is another band that I think um, <clears throat> Out the Door is a, is a great song. It's just like, baby, I'm out the door. We're done. Hoodoo Guru's off of, uh, um, yeah, blow your, blow your cool, Hoodoo Guru's. Another one which is basically kind of an angry, we're done one. I would have to go back to this and it would be Idiot Win. Um, the vitriol in that is so visceral and so strong that the relationship is over and done. And uh, it, it can't be said more powerfully than Bob does on Blood on the Tracks. Idiot Wind. Sometimes in the, uh, towards the twilight of the relationship, um, there is a uh, desperate uh, quest to get back together again. Whether you've betrayed them, they've betrayed you, or things have gone completely sideways, but you uh, definitely want to try to, try to make it work again. Uh, you're just too scared to let the whole thing uh, end. So, The Temptations Ain't Too Proud to Beg. Such a great song by The Temptations Ain't Too Proud to Beg. And for Mr. Zimmerman, Baby, allow me one more chance. So, honey, just allow me one more chance off the freewheel and Bob Dylan, my extremely worn copy uh, with Suze Rotolo there walking through New York City. Um, yeah, just one more chance. Just give me one more chance, baby. There's a lot of soul songs that have that in it. Too. And then as the tape slash relationship, mixtape slash relationship is kind of winding down, we've got... Um, 
we've got regrets. We've got that um, feeling of um, maybe it could have been, it, we could have made it work. Uh, we could have done more. Um, I wish that there was still something there, but it's coming from a place of it's it's really all over. This The caveat to this one, uh, the Kate Bush, the dreaming is uh, all of the love. Um, just a, a killer track off of this. I don't think it actually is really geared towards um, some a love interest. Um, it's more regret over not expressing love to people that are important in your life. And uh, I've mentioned this before. The, it closes out with these um, incredible uh, voicemails of like answering machine voicemails of just simply saying goodbye. And they're all sort of casual, mostly casual, but they're all different people. And I think they're real voicemail messages, maybe in Kate's machine, I'm not really sure. But the the core of it is that if we had only, if we'd known that there, there wasn't going to last forever, that um, we had expressed our love more fully and more completely. So all the love. Kate Bush. Getting kind of maudlin, aren't I? So then the other, from Bob Dylan's perspective, in terms of regrets, I threw it all away. Um, wow, what a great song. He's, it's from the perspective of looking back on the relationship and realizing he's, you know, he didn't, um, he didn't realize what he had and he threw it all away and he's now regretting that he didn't do more um, in the relationship, but I threw it all away. Nashville Skyline, Bob Dylan. All right, we've come to the end of the mixtape and the end of the relationship. Uh, it's now run its course. And then this final tape, if it was the whole tape of songs for this stage in the relationship, you'd probably kick it off with Tom Rush and No Regrets. Uh, just a wonderful song. Um, basically, my, my interpretation is that it ended, but I don't regret um, having gone through all of that. It was really meaningful for me. Another one that I think is really good is um, The Knitters. So this is uh, members of X, uh, John Doe, Maxine Cervenka. I'm not sure if the other guys are on here. <clears throat> There's Dave Alvin from The Blasters and uh, G DJ Bonebreak, the drummer from X. Anyways, this is uh, their first, I think they did two uh, little play on words, The Knitters from The Weavers, I believe. And... Um, there's a track on here called Someone Like You. I still miss someone like you. And it's almost, uh, we almost call full circle as it were, um, with the trogs, with a girl like you. Um, almost like imagining somebody in, in a role in your life who is, is going to kind of fill you full of joy. And this is the end. And I still miss someone like you and being very careful not to say I miss you, but I miss someone like you and, and what we had together. So there we go. There's a mixtape of, um, oh, I got to do Dylan. <laughs> the last one, Dylan, on this mixtape, um, I'm going to say, well, again, I have to go back to Blood on the Tracks and, um, and it's going to be, you're going to make me lonesome when you go. So maybe that person's already left, but um, actually, if you see her, say hello. I think that's a more appropriate one for No Regrets. It's it's really recognizing and, and um, uh, appreciating what you've had in this uh, relationship with this person and knowing also acceptance with the fact that it's over. So there you go. The arc of a relationship in mixed tapes. Um, and hope you enjoyed and um, be curious to see if you have any comments. All right. Carpe diem, MFs.